Amen. Hey, welcome back, everyone. Um, in our last presentation, we we're going through an overview of what um, I'm adding to to this this seminar, and we're going through the um, the story of Josiah, where he stood between the the north and the south, and he received the arrows. Um, from the south, which we learn that this is this fiery trial that the Lord is going to allow Egypt or the world to bring upon upon God's people. And as these these things are going to come upon us, we are we are not to we are not to rise up against it because then we will be rising up against the Lord, as Josiah did when he rose up against Egypt. We are we are to do the opposite and to embrace this fiery trial because it is going to draw us closer to Christ and closer to one another. So um, I'm going to go through the aspect of the arrows in, in this presentation and by God's grace bring us into a closer understanding of what, um, what is going to fall upon us. And Lord, we have, the Lord says that we have nothing to fear for the future except the way the Lord has led us in in the past. So we have to hold on to, hold on to the truths that the Lord has given on to us. Even if we, we have just come into the message, even if we've just come into the truth, we have those who are amongst us to strengthen us for the labors and the tasks that are before us. For the Lord also has a promise that, a, a reassurance, I should say, that those who, who come into the truth, they don't have a, an experience in the first and the second. But though they do not have this experience in the first and the second, the Lord brings them into connection with those who have that experience. And in doing so, they are to strengthen those that, that, does, that does not have that experience, that they can they can be eased of the burdens and be strengthened for this trial that is before us. So I pray that, that, that it may not deter us from this, but we may have strength in the Lord and go in his strength for when we are weak, he is strong. So as we continue, we see that, that these arrows is, is a symbol of the heat, the lightning and these coals of fire. And the Lord, when he was lifted up between heaven and earth, he received the, he also received these arrows. And in the top of the notes, it says the arrows are, are H2671. And it says, it's thunderbolt or the shaft of a spear, a dart, a staff or a wound. So we are to receive all these things because we are to walk in the path that Christ has laid out before us. So beginning at DA 754 paragraph through three, it says at the ninth hour, the darkness lifted from the people, but still enveloped the savior. It was a, it was a symbol of the agony and horror that weighed upon his heart. So all the things that are, that happened in 2020, all the things that are happening this year, all of that darkness is going to lift off to the people and come upon the, the LPC in this, in this little trying um, period, right before the, the sign. It says, no eye could, could pierce the gloom that surrounded the cross, and none could penetrate the deeper gloom that enshrouded the suffering soul of Christ. The angry lightnings, the angry lightning seemed to be hurled at him as he hung upon the cross. Then Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sakbantali, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? As the, as the, the outer gloom settled, upon, settled about the Savior, many voices exclaimed, the vengeance of heaven is upon him. So the vengeance of, of, of heaven is going to be upon us. For we have pierced Christ. We have gone into, 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 into darkness, and we have um, we have caused great gloom to fall upon Christ. But by His by His grace, the Lord has shed and given us a lot of light, 
and turned us from a lot of our evil ways. It says the bolts of God's wrath are hurled at him because he claimed to be the son of God. We as well are claiming to be the son of God because we're saying that we have the truth. So if you have the truth, you are the son of God. It says many who believed on him heard his despairing cry. Hope left them. If God had forsaken Jesus, in what could his, his followers trust? 3SP 13, paragraph 3. It says, The most responsible period for the Jews was when Jesus was in their midst. And yet, even the disciples appreciated but lightly the presence of God's Son until it was removed from them, when Christ ascended to heaven. Even how many of us, even now, are, are lightly appreciating the, the light that the Lord has given unto us, how he has fed us, how he has nourished us physically and spiritually. The Lord says light has ever been a symbol of his presence. But many of us have lightly esteemed the, the, the bright beams of his glory when, when they are, are presented before us. It says there is the redeemer was unwilling to serve to no unwilling to sever his connection with the Jewish nation. He had borne with its impenitence and abuse for years. He regarded them with the same unselfish devotion which a, a mother a mother feels toward the child of her care. For centuries he had stayed the bolts of God's wrath from falling on Jerusalem, but now she she had filled up the cup of her iniquity. By persecution, by persecution of the Son of God and, div and divine vengeance was to fall upon her. Next quote, 4SP 29, says, The long-suffering of God toward Jerusalem only confirmed the Jews in their stubborn impenitence. In their hatred and cruelty toward the disciples of Jesus, they rejected the last offer of mercy. Then God withdrew his protection from them and removed his restraining power from Satan and his angels. And the nation was left to the control of the leader she had chosen. Her children had spurned the grace of Christ, which would have enabled them to, to subdue the evil impulses. And now these became the conquerors. So, um, Kennard made mention of, of the four winds. And the four winds, he says, are, are what? No, human passions. They're human. The four winds are, are... Yeah, one of them. One of them. They're human passions. Yes. Yeah. They're um, human passions that, that are, um, are going to be let loose in, in this time. But for those who are, for those who, who are not holding on to the cord and those who are not finding their, their refuge in Christ, these, these human passions are going to, are going to um, take sway over them and they'll be controlled by their own passions. They're going to become like the brute beast that, that the Lord has, is, is showing unto us. So Satan aroused the, aroused the fiercest and most debased passions of the soul. Men did not reason. They were beyond reason, controlled by impulse and blind rage. Since they became satanic in their cruelty, in the family and in the nation alike, among the highest and lowest classes, there, there was suspicion, envy, hatred, strife, rebellion, and murder. There was no safety anywhere. Friends and kindred be betrayed one another. Parents slew their children and children their parents. The rulers of the people had no power to rule themselves. Uncontrolled passions made them tyrants. The Jews had accepted false testimony to condemn the innocent, the innocent son of God. Now false accusations made their own lives uncertain. But their actions, they had long been saying, caused a whole, by their actions, they had long been saying, caused the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Now their desire was granted. The fear of God no longer disturbed him. 
Satan was at the head of the nation, and the highest civil and religious authorities were under his sway. The leaders of the opposing factions at times united to plunder and torture the, the, their wretched victims. And again, they fell upon each other forces, forces and slaughtered without mercy. Even the sanctity of the temple could not, be, could, could not restrain their horrible ferocity. The worshippers were stricken down by, by the altar, and the sanctuary was polluted with the bodies of the slain. Yet in their blind, blasphemous presumption, the instigators of this hellish work public, publicly declared that they had no fear that Jerusalem would be destroyed, for it was God's own city. To establish their power more firmly, they bribed false prophets to proclaim. Even the, the Roman legions were besieging the temple that the people were to await for deliverance from God. To the last, multitudes held fast to the belief that the Most High would interpose for the defeat of their adversaries. But Israel had spurned the divine protection, and now she had no defense. Unhappy Jerusalem, rent by internal dissensions, the blood of her children slain by one another's hands, crimsoning, crimsoning her streets while alien armies beat down her fortifications and slew her men of war. We have to see these things as not just being ancient Israel, but we have to see it as in our own homes, within our own lives. These things are depictions of what would happen to us if we turn from the truth. Like um, Kadar brought up, we have to know that, that the ship that we're into, that we're in, that Christ is also in that ship. And we have to know for for a surety that that we are in um, the the refuge. Continuing on, it says all the predictions given by Christ concerning the destruction of Jerusalem were fulfilled to the letter. The Jews experienced the truth of His words of warning: "With what measure ye met, it sh it shall be measured to you again." Signs and wonders appeared for foreboding disaster and doom. A comet resembling a flaming sword for a year hung over the city. An unnatural light was seen hovering over the temple. These are the supernatural events that 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 Kanar was speaking of. Upon the clouds are pictured chariots mustering for battle. Mysterious voices in the temple court uttered the warning words, Let us depart hence. The eastern gate of the inner court which was of brass and so heavy that it, that it was with difficulty shut by a score of men and having bolts fastened deep in the firm on pavement was seen at midnight to be opened of its own accord. Oh yes, with the, with the sepulchre's rent. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Just as um, just as the Millerites saw the symbols to to Christ's second coming, we are to see the same things. We are just repeating the very the very same history. Okay. Under fearful conviction, Christ's object lessons one fifty eight paragraph two. But we must have a knowledge of ourselves, a knowledge that will result in contrition before we can find pardon and peace. The Pharisee felt no conviction of sin. The Holy Spirit could not work with him. His soul was encased in a self-righteous armor, which the arrows of God, arrows of God barbed and true aimed by angels' hands, failed to penetrate. It is only he who knows himself to be a sinner that Christ can save. He came to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of, the, of sight to the, to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. But they that are whole need not a physician. We must know our real condition, or we shall not feel our, our need of Christ's help. We must understand our danger, or we shall flee, or we shall not flee, amen, to the, to the refuge. We must feel the pain of our wounds or we should not desire healing. 
this this trial that that is is to come it is it is a pain that we that we must endure for it is only through feeling pain that we know that something is wrong within the body so this outworking is just to show the spiritual pain that we are actually we are truly in to show the the wrongs that is within, within our hearts as the disciples went through the tempest that showed them their hearts it says the day of God's vengeance cometh the day of the fierceness of 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 his wrath who will abide the day of his coming men have hardened their hearts against the spirit of God but arrows of his wrath will pierce where the arrows of conviction could not so either way you're going to receive arrows you're either going to receive the arrows of conviction from the holy spirit or you're going to receive the arrows of destruction that are going to fall um upon you for um grieving the holy spirit for turning away from from the truth god will not far hence arise to deal with the sinner will the false shepherd shield the transgressor in that day can he be excused who went with the, the multitude in the path of disobedience will popularity or numbers make any guiltless these are questions which the careless and indifferent should consider and settle for themselves so last presentation i make mention of our of our of our past brethren in ffa and a part of the 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 rhetoric of the world is this cancel culture so a lot of a lot of a lot of what they want to do is just beat down and and and, and remove anyone who goes against their holy order their unholy order i should say because if you speak up against gays they want to they want to throw you into into the mire they want to put you down into the pit if you speak up against um democrats they want to put you in the pit you speak up against blacks asians whites no matter what it is they want to put you down in the pit and god's people us little praying company we speak up against all of them so it's the very same thing that that is going to happen to us you're going to have some who are going to knock on our doors and ask us are you that person that's in the news are you the one that is speaking up against so and so and is and and these whatever may whatever they whatever the lord actually would allow them to do must be and we must humbly accept it and go forward still preaching the truth as the disciples did and as as the 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 our forefathers have done in the past as well what the same spirit that was behind those who 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 brought FFA into the pit is going to do the same and even worse to us because Satan hates us even more than he hates them but there will be a time when those who come up against us will have to face um Christ for themselves So we have to also come to them and say brethren do not so wickedly for as they are they are people as well they are our brethren so we have to tell we have to plead with them not to not to grieve the lord not to speak up against the lord's anointed and peter says but these as natural brute beast made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of the things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption a lot of the people who are part of these these groups they don't know what what is actually happening in the darkness how the papacy is weaving this 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 web of of destruction to bring about her her own means they're just following in the in the current of of um the world but in doing so they're they're just heaping up their these these condemnations against themselves It says and shall receive the reward of the of unrighteousness as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime spots they are spots they are and blemishes sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you Next quote 
DA 380, paragraph 2, said the disciples had that day witnessed the wonderful works of Christ. It had seemed that heaven had come down to the earth. The memory of that precious, glorious day should have filled them with faith and hope. Had they, out of, out of the abundance of their hearts, been conversing together in regard to these things, they would have not entered into temptation. But their disappointment had absorbed their thoughts. The words of Christ gather up the fragments that nothing be lost were unheeded. Those, those were hours of large blessing to the disciples, but they had forgotten it all. They were in the midst of troubled waters. Their thoughts were stormy and unreasonable, and the Lord gave them something, something else to afflict their souls and occupy their minds. God often does this when men create burdens and troubles for themselves. The disciples had, not, had no need to make trouble. Already danger was fast approaching. Tempestuous. Amen. Amen. So, amen. He brought their own on themselves. The Lord manifested the, the thoughts of the disciples. Amen. So now let's bring this home. We are not Christ's disciples. Amen. So if we're not Christ's disciples, what is the world showing us? What is the world showing us of how... Um, we treat one another, how we treat our brethren. All these things are manifestations of what is going on within our own hearts. These internal dissensions that Satan brings in to try to separate us from one another. Yes, they're one body. <clears throat> a violent tempest had been stealing upon them, and they were unprepared for it. It was a sudden contrast for the day, for the day had been perfect, and when the gale struck them, they were afraid. They forgot their disaffection, their, their unbelief, their impatience. Everyone worked to keep the boat from sinking. It was but a short distance by sea from Bethsaida to the point where where they expected to meet Jesus and in ordinary weather the journey the journey required but a few hours but now they were driven farther and farther from the point they sought until the fourth watch of the night they toiled at the oars then the weary men gave themselves up for loss in storm and darkness the sea had taught them their own helplessness and they longed for the presence of their master so so all things work together, amen, for good, for them who love the Lord. So even though, even though these, these things may, may come about, those who survive the, the tempest and the storm will, will be brought even closer to together. It says, the sun had set and the blackness of night settled down upon the stormy sea. The waves lashed into fury by the howling winds. By the howling winds, dashed fairly over the disciples' boat and threatened to engulf it. Those hardy fishermen had spent their lives upon the lake and, and had guided their, their craft safely through many, uh, many a storm. But now their strength and skill availed nothing. They were helpless in the grasp of the tempest, and hope failed them as they, as they saw that their boat was filling. Absorbed in their efforts to save themselves, they had forgotten that Jesus was on board. Now, seeing their labor vain and only death before them, they remembered at whose command they had set, set out to cross the sea. And Jesus was their only hope. In their helplessness and despair, they cried, Master, Master. But the dense darkness hid, hid him from their sight. Their voice was drowned by the roaring of the tempest, and there was no reply. Doubt and fear assailed them. Had Jesus for, forsaken them? Had Jesus forsaken them? Was he, 
who had conquered disease and demons and even death powerless to help his, his disciples now? Was he unmindful of them in distress? Again they called, but there was no answer except the shrieking of the angry blast. Already their boat is sinking. A moment and apparently a moment and apparently they will be swallowed up by the hungry waters. Suddenly a flash of lightning pierced the darkness, and they see Jesus lying asleep undisturbed by the tumult. In amazement and despair, they exclaim, Master, carest thou not that we perish? How can how can he rest so peacefully while they are in danger and battling and battling with death? It's because he was in the in the refuge. Their cry arose arouse, arouses Jesus as the lightnings glare as the lightnings glare reveal him. They see the peace of heaven in his face. They read in his is his glance so forgetful tender love and their hearts turn turning to him cry lord save us save us we perish never did a soul utter that cry unheeded as the disciples grasp their oars to make a last effort jesus rises he stands in the midst of his disciples while the tempest rages the waves break over them and the lightning illuminates his countenance he he lifts his hand so often employed in, in deeds of mercy and says to the angry and to the angry sea, peace be still. So only those who are are in the ship with Christ and those who are holding on, holding on to um, to these chords are the ones who are going to hear those those sweet words. But like I, like I said, with, um, with this, this cancel culture that is going to rise up, rise themselves up against us, which is all of Egypt, they're going to bring these arrows against us as well. They're going to try to pierce us and drag us down into, into the pit. And we'll see what, what some of these, these arrows are. In 2T, 270, paragraph 1, it says, when railing accusations and taunts more cruel than spears and arrows have fallen upon you, the influence of the Spirit of God upon, upon your heart has led you to speak calmly and dispassionately. So this is Christ. Christ was calm. The, all, these, the, all the waves and the roaring of, of the sea did not bring him into, into any lack of faith. He stood there and, and said, peace be still. Let's see how our how our how our sister went through this this same this same trial. For we have all of Christianity going to be aroused here. And and if all of Christianity is gonna come up there, we have we have those who are going to disassociate themselves with us, they're gonna separate from us, as did um the Protestants wanted to separate from the, the Millerites. So ST March 9th, 1876, paragraph 18, and, and downward. It says, The minister did not attempt to refer to a single text that would prove us in error, but excused himself on the plea of, of a want of time. He advised us to quietly withdraw from the church and avoid the publicity of a trial. So, so the Adventist structure... They're gonna bring. They, we're gonna be brought be, be before them as well, because the Lord says we be brought between before kings, governors, governors, and rulers, and it's no coincidence that the Lord is teaching us about the higher powers. But on each level, there's a higher power, so we're gonna have to answer to to these these higher powers that are Adventism, because we are also saying we're Seven Day Adventists, but with the truth, we're the true Seventh-day Adventists, and we're the true Protestants. So, so as all of Christianity is going to be lifted up before the world at, in this time, we're going to be brought before these same officials, and they are going to um, 
they're going to see that all that we have to say is correct, but, but they're not going to heed to any of our, our warnings. Continuing on, says we are we were aware that that others of our brethren were meeting with similar treatment, for, for a like cause, and we did not wish it. Wish it understood that we were ashamed to acknowledge our faith, or were unable to sustain it by Scripture. So many parents insist that they should be acquainted with the the reason for this request. The only answer to this was an evasive declaration that we had walked contrary to the rules of the church. And the best course would be to voluntarily withdraw it to save, to save a trial. We answered that we preferred a regular trial and demanded to know what sin was charged to us, as we were conscious of no wrong in looking for and loving the appearing of, of the Savior. Not long after... We were notified to be present at a meeting to be to be held in the in the vestry of the church. There, there were but few present. The influence of my father and his family was such that our accusers had no desire to present opposers. Thank you, had no desire to present our cases before a large number of the congregation. The single charge preferred was that we walk contrary to their rules. So we were spoken up against their order. Upon our asking what rules we had violated, it was stated after a little hesitation that we had attended other meetings and had neglected to meet regularly with our class. We stated that a portion of the family had been in the country for some time past, that none who remained in, in the city had been absent from class meeting more than a few weeks. And they were morally compelled to remain, to remain away because the testimonies they bore met with such marked um, disapprobation. If the hope of their savior's, savior's soon coming was mentioned, a feeling of displeasure was manifested against them. And they were conscious, were conscious of arousing a bitter spirit of antagonism. We also reminded them that certain persons who had not attended class meeting for a year were yet held in good standing. So even compared with those who are truly doing wrong, they would turn a blind eye to it and, and say that we were in, in um, even greater wrongs than they. Barabbas and Amen, Barabbas and, and Christ. And even myself and my brethren, when we were, when we were at FFA, that, that same thing happened to us, where they were throwing slander upon upon us for only speaking the truth. Next quote. It was asked if we would confess that we had departed from their rules and if we would also agree to conform to them in, in future. We asked that we dare not yield our faith nor deny the sacred truth of God, that we could not forego the hope of the soon coming of our Redeemer, that after the manner which they had, which they had, which they called heresy, we must continue to worship the Lord. My father is in his defense received the blessing of God, and we all left the vestry with with free spirits and and happy in the consciousness of of right and the approving smile of Jesus. We felt the assurance that God was on our side, and He was stronger than all that were against us. The next Sunday at the commencement of the the, the love feast the, El, of the love feast elder b elder b read off our names seven in number as discontinued from the church he stated that we were not expelled on account of any wrong or immoral conduct that we were of unblemished character and inevitable reputation but in oh the amen enviable reputation but we had been guilty of walking contrary to the rules of the methodist church he also declared that a door was now open, and all who were guilty of similar breach of the rules would be dealt with in like manner. At this time, there were many in the church who waited for the appearing of the Savior, and this implied threat, and this implied threat was, was made for the purpose of frightening them into subjection. 
In some cases, this policy brought about the desired result, and the favor of God was sold for a place in the Methodist church. Many believed but dared not confess their faith, lest they, they should be turned out of, this, out of the synagogue. But some left suit after and joined the company of those who were looking for the Savior. At this time, the words of the prophet, prophet were exceeding, exceedingly precious. Your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, Let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy, and they shall be ashamed. So, even in, in this trial, in their in this persecution of their of their own, they turned they turned to to righteousness. So we must keep this in mind that even some that are going to turn against us may may in the end lift up holy hands with us. We we cannot murmur against the the, the workings of of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's the same thing that happened in the in the twelve sixty. Satan, Satan came forth to try to openly persecute and kill God's people, but that only brought more into into the the church and turn against the Catholic Church. So it's the same thing that's going to happen in our time as well. As we are being persecuted, some are being convicted by that that very same thing. Same with Stephen and 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 Saul. One T five seventy seven paragraph two a quote that we're very familiar with it says that night I dreamed that I was in Battle Creek looking out from the side glass at the at the door and saw a company marching up to the house two and two they looked stern and determined I knew them well and turned to the turn to open the door the parlor door to receive them but thought I that but thought I would look again. The scene was changed. The company now presented the appearance of a Catholic procession. So even, so God forbid, even some of us that are, that are eating and feasting with us may, may rise up and turn against us and become this very same Catholic procession. It says, one bore in his hand a cross, another a reed, and as they approached the one carrying a reed made a circle around the house, saying three times, the house is proscribed. The goods must be confiscated. They had spoken, amen, they're, they're, they're encompass, they encompass the house. They're on all four quarters. They have spoken against our holy order. Now they're taking all your earthly support. It says, terror sees me, and I ran through the house out of, out of the north door and found myself in the midst of a company, some of whom I knew, but I dared not speak a word to them for fear of being betrayed. I tried to seek a retired spot where I met, where, where I might weep and pray without meeting eager, inquisitive eyes wherever I turned. I repeated frequently, if I could only understand this, if they will tell me what I have said or what I have done. She's... She's only writing about the experience she, she, we just read in, in Signs of the Times. It's the, it's the very same, very same thing. I wept and prayed much as I saw our goods confiscated. We saw all of our earthly support, all the, the, the government assistance, all the funds that we're receiving now, all our homes, everything. Everything will be confiscated. It says, I tried to read sympathy or pity for, for me and the looks of those around me and mark the countenance of several whom, whom I thought would speak, would speak to me and comfort me. If they did not fear that they would be of, observed by others, I made one attempt to escape from the crowd, but seeing that I was watched, I concealed my attentions. I commit. I commence weeping aloud and saying, if they would only tell me what I have done or what I have said. My husband, who was sleeping in the bed in the same room, heard me weeping aloud and awoke me. My pillow was wet with tears, and a sad depression of spirit was upon me. 
Amen. Spirits. Depression of spirits was upon me. Now, in closing, it says, In the last great conflict of the controversy with Satan, those who are loyal to God will see every earthly support cut off. This is the controversy that is, that is battling within each and every one of our hearts. Our, when, when the Holy Spirit hits us with these arrows and strikes us to the very core, we have to understand that, that, that these external features that are, sh that are taking place in the world is only, what, only a depiction of the battle that's happened within our hearts. And we have to submit ourselves to these things. Put on this, these sackcloth and ashes and bury our, our, our faces into the ground and, and, and ask, for, ask for our Savior. It says, last quote, Satan says, for fear of wanting food and clothing, they will join with the world in transgressing God's law. The earth will be holy under my dominion. Let us close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, as you have given us example after example, Lord, of, of, of the way that, that those who came before us have been treated, I pray, Lord, that we may, may ready ourselves for what is to come, that we may humble our hearts, Lord, and confess our wrongs before you, that we may stand firm upon your platform, and that we may be able to stand with assurance upon the truth. Please guide us, Lord, in, in, in what we are to do. And I pray that in these meetings, we are to leave, Lord, um, not as we came, but in a higher state of, of, of mind, having a third angel's message ever before us. Help us, Lord, and, and free us, Lord, from our def defilements. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.